Hey everyone, what's going on? So this is going to be my first video where I kind of edit. Um, I said in a few other videos that my computer was running kind of, you know, slow and uh, I was going to upgrade the RAM and I finally did. It came in a few days ago and I upgraded the RAM and I actually recorded this video on Tuesday, but what happened was, I don't know why, but my lips are out of sync with the audio and uh, I hope that's not, you know, has anything to do with the RAM upgrade I, I really hope because you know I uh, I like recording it on my computer it's a little bit easier con considering that my camera that I recorded my first video on um, it's like really zoomed in and until I get a new camera uh, I don't want to use that so yeah so uh, I actually recorded this video already but I have to re-record it anyways uh, this is going to my series of top films of 2012 um, I know it's it's already almost February, but uh, you know I wanted to see some more movies, and uh, I explained that in my in my top 25 films. I still have two more entries, and I'm gonna do one of those, and right after this. So here we go. This is gonna be my top supporting actors and actresses of 2012. Uh, let's start it off with number three, Emily Blunt in Your Sister Sister and Looper. Um, if you guys have seen Your Sister Sister, you may know that she kind of plays. More of a lead, but in compared to <clears throat> Rosemary DeWitt, I would say that she would technically be support in that film. Um, but she's definitely support in Looper. I think she's fantastic in both. It shows how strong of a year uh, she had and, and how underrated of an actress she is. I think those are both two very, very good films. And uh, without her and them, I don't know how good they would be. I think she's fantastic in both. And uh, it kind of reminds me how great of an actress that she is and how much I love her as an actress. She's one of my favorites. Actually, all three of these actresses are some of my favorites. Um, but yeah, uh, number three, Emily Blunt, your sister's sister, and Looper. Number two, Amy Adams in The Master. Um, the Master won't be making my top 25 list. Uh, I did enjoy all the performances. I think all, th all the main performances are fantastic, and I'm sure all three will be making my uh, lists of um, in their respective categories but uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the movie it wasn't the direction or anything like that but it was just the story and I didn't quite get the film uh, so that's why it didn't make my top 25 but again I think Amy Adams is uh, very good in this movie it's something that we really haven't seen her do and it was just uh, a great performance uh, as well as all the other performances in the movie um, number one Anne Hathaway, Les Mis, uh, I think she's fantastic in that movie. I think she's the best performance in that movie. And if you've seen my review of Les Mis, you may know that I did enjoy the film, but uh, as soon as her character's arc is done, I, I think the film kind of fell apart after that. Um, I thought she was fantastic, and her version of I Dreamed a Dream, as I was watching that, I was like, I think I'm watching her win an Oscar because it was that good. And uh, it, she's going to win the Oscar. If if there's two shoe-ins, it's her and Daniel Day-Lewis. And uh, there's no doubt about it that she will win Best Actress. The Academy Awards, and uh, I think it's well-deserving. I haven't said that in a while for this category and a lot of categories. And I think she is definitely the the best supporting actress of this year in my ranks. And she will get the gold. So um, I, those were you know, three fantastic performances. And actually, if you want to go into Anne Hathaway, she was great in Batman, too. I loved her as Catwoman. So, I mean, that's technically support, but it's on a whole different ballpark of Les Mis. Um, yeah, so now, because I only did three supporting actresses, I figured I'd make up for it. I was going to do th uh, five supporting actors because it was just a way stronger year for supporting actors I'd actually say supporting actors are the strongest of all the acting categories this year and uh, so I'm gonna do six instead of five just to kinda make up for the the one that was missing uh, so started off number six James Gandolfini in Killing Them Softly, Zero Dark Thirty and Not Fade Away if you know I'm not a huge fan of Not Fade Away I, I made a, a movie review for it I didn't like the movie, but it wasn't because of James Gandolfini and uh, the acting. It was more so of the direction and uh, the bad editing. But I actually uh, think this was a huge comeback year for James Gandolfini. Uh, if you look at the past, I don't know, probably seven years, ever since The Sopranos ended, he really hasn't done anything for his film career. And this was a big year to prove, you know, 
that he is a good actor. He is a good uh, guy, and he should be in he should be in movies. And uh, he had three great performances. His best is in Killing Them Softly. Um, and what's funny is that's not even the best supporting, uh, you know, supporting acting job in that movie uh, that's coming up. But uh, he was fantastic in Killing Them Softly. If you haven't seen it, he was like a a hooker loving uh, alcoholic hitman, you know, who's a little bit washed up, and he has like two amazing conversation with Brad Pitt's character and it was just a great movie and uh just great dialogue throughout the whole film and if it wasn't for the acting of James Gandolfini I don't know how much I would have enjoyed it but it was a fantastic movie and uh, he was great in it so I'm glad he's back hopefully he uses this year to bounce and get some more roles um but yeah number five uh, or number six James Gandolfini number five I just brought him up uh kind of Scoot McNary and Killing Them Softly and Argo um, without a doubt, the best part of Killing Them Softly, and that's a very, very well-acted movie, and, uh, he really stole the show, he was, uh, just brilliant, and you truly felt remorse for his character, you felt everything for his character, uh, because, you know, he wasn't all there, he was kind of stupid, and, uh, uh, man, he was just a great character in a great role, and, uh, it was played brilliantly by Scoot McNary, and, uh, a year where he kind of came out of nowhere, I, I didn't, I've never heard his name before, until this year, and then, I, I, the initial buzz out of Khans, um, that was that he was fantastic in Killing Him Softly, and then I heard that he was going to be an Argo too, so, um, yeah, he kind of came out of nowhere this year, and again, he was great in Argo as well, he was on, kind of like the opposite of his character in Killing Him Softly, but yeah, he stole, he stole some scenes in that movie as well. Um, just a fantastic year for him. I, I'm really curious to see where he goes and uh, see if he gets any leading roles because I think he's a fine actor and a fine young actor. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, number five, Scoot McNary. Uh, number four, this one was a little bit harder because uh, this is a film that I'm very passionate about and there's many performances in this movie that could have made this list, but I had to... I'm thinking more in the future, and in 10, 15 years, when I'm thinking about this film, I, I don't think I'll be thinking about the other characters. I'll be thinking about this one. And that's uh, number four, Samuel L. Jackson in Django Unchained. Uh, I think he's fantastic in this movie. And me, I've said this before, and I think that Christoph Waltz is a leading actor in Django Unchained. He may not be the title character, but I just don't feel comfortable putting him as support. Um, he's in... Practically every scene of the movie, as much as Django, maybe has more, definitely has more lines of dialogue than Django, but I just consider him the lead in that film, so he will not be on my supporting list. Look forward to him on the uh, best actors. But, um, yeah, number four, Samuel L. Jackson, Django Unchained. He beat out DiCaprio and Don Johnson, who I both loved. And uh, I just think in 15 years, when we're thinking about Django, we're going to be thinking about the memorable lines from Samuel L. Jackson and not those other guys. Because, I mean, this dude really stole the show. I'm not a huge Samuel L. Jackson fan. I like him in Tarantino's work. I like him in a few other things. But I'm not like a fanboy, as like a lot of people are. And uh, I was just completely surprised by how good his character was. Um, number three, Philip Seymour Hoffman, The Master. Uh, I, every, every Paul Thomas Anderson movie that I have seen, Philip Seymour Hoffman is fantastic and, and usually the best part about that film. Um, and it continues here. I think he is the best, uh, actor in this film and uh, I think he, it's played brilliantly and it's just a fantastic performance. I think, oh, he did, did he, get, he got an Oscar nomination and it's well-deserved. Um, I really liked his performance in a movie that I was a little bit, you know, weary about. Uh, number two, Ezra Miller and Perks of Being a Wallflower. Uh, I loved Ezra Miller in this film. I think as I was watching it, I was just like, man, I'm watching a future star because that's how good he was. His character was tragic and he was hilarious and he was just played brilliantly by uh, Ezra Miller. And like I said, I just, I watched him and I feel like I was watching, you know, a star being made because he was just so good in that movie. And it was actually like the total opposite of we need to talk about Kevin last year, and that was another good performance from him. So um, he's you know he's definitely one of the brightest upcoming actors, and I just really cannot wait to see what he lines up in his future. Hopefully, he takes the right path and uh, picks some 
you know, strong roles and, and, you know, can get him some more recognition because he was fantastic in Perks. I love that film and uh, he might be my favorite part of it. So, yeah, number two, Ezra Miller and Perks of being a wallflower. Uh, number one, the year of Matthew McConaughey. It is that year. Uh, he bounced back and had a string of big movies, all successful in terms of, uh, you know, box office and then in terms of, you know, his acting. And uh, Magic Mike, he was fantastic, and I really enjoyed that movie. And I think without Matthew McConaughey playing that shady, you know, manipula uh, manipulative um, strip club owner, I, I don't think it would have been nearly as good. I mean, his character was, you know, so two-faced. And, you know, on the other hand, he was very enthusiastic and just killed, the like, the stripping aspect of it. But, you know, if you look behind that, there was a deeper character in it, and it was just brilliantly played by Matthew McConaughey, in my opinion. Um, I think that was the one that was like, okay, you know, the the hype is right. This is Matthew McConaughey's year, and I'm really glad. I've I've always kind of liked Matthew McConaughey, uh, even through a string of bad movies. I thought he was, you know, a guy that still had talent, but was just making the wrong decisions, like Ben Affleck, who you know, was in the same ballpark as Matthew McConaughey, you know, six, seven years ago, and he kind of pulled himself out of the slumps by doing better movies, and I think that's what Matthew McConaughey is doing right now, and uh, I'm really looking forward to 2012, I know, or 2013, I know he's going to have another big year, so uh, yeah, that's my top supporting actors and my top supporting actresses, um, thanks for checking this video out, I know it's a little bit longer, but uh, look forward to my top actors, and then my top actresses. I'm going to do those separately. So thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, share this video. Leave some comments. Tell me what you thought of my picks. You know, all that jazz. So uh, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it.